in your article, and this, in, for those that don't know, Tharawat Magazine is probably one of the, you know, them and Family Business Magazine, the two biggest family business, you know, publications out there. Um, Tharawat um, across, you know, worldwide and Family Business Magazine's more U.S. based, but they do, you know, some other, some other pieces as well. Um, so that's a, it's a great publication and, you know, this, this is not, uh, you know, a simple article. This isn't a, a one page 500, you know, you know, 500 word blog post or something. This is, there's some meat inside of here and you, you kick off the article just talking about to sell or not to sell. And those are almost like, you know, those are swear words in the family business, isn't it? You know, when you, when you talk about it, how many times do people even entertain the idea of selling it's for the current generation isn't that you know taboo to be talking like that and that's how you start the article off well there's yeah you're right and it's 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 taboo to, to some but the fact of the matter is a bunch are getting sold so it's 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 not just an academic question um selling a business is a big deal and there's 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 two fundamental issues one is financially and that's that's pretty easy to kind of sort through and figure out. The other is the family side, which is not seldom talked about as well. And until you experience it, you probably don't fully appreciate the impact. But a lot of our family business friends, the business, you know, is, is who they are. It's where they get to hang out. If you're a senior person like, like you know, I am, I guess, these days, it gives you a place to go to the office and still feel like you're, you know, engaged and part of, part of the, the business. If you're younger, it gives you your career. So and it get, gets you connected to the family. You see each other regularly. So when you sell the family business, it's a big deal from an emotional sense of worth, sense of self perspective. So that's something that I like to, and we talk about in the book, you know, the, the impact it has on the family. Financially, you know, having been through it both with our family business, one of them, we kept, we still have one of Gen 5 one right now, but and having purchased several in the public company when we were doing an industry consolidation, um, it sounds great if you get a seven multiple or whatever, or but, uh, but then when you pay the taxes, and you have perhaps two thirds of the capital up, your net worth has just gone down because you've had to pay taxes on the, on the gain, then you reinvest in this lovely stock and bond market, um, you know, the, the cash flow is significantly less. So when you sell your family business, you have less capital, less cash flow, although you're diversified. And we can talk later on about, I think you can accomplish that diversification issue, which is a valid issue, and liquidity issue, which is a valid issue, in a much more savvy way than selling your business. So the options are though, either grow it and, and make it work for the next generation or grow it and sell it. Uh, there's a third option, which I don't think the, you know, endorse, although, it, it, it's fine is, is the lifestyle business, right? You, you're making a nice cash flow. I'm not going to grow it. Works well for my family. It might work for my one kid. Maybe not. Um, it's not going to be very attractive from a sales position. And you're probably not going to have top not management working there because it's a static, you know, kind of industry where you're not your business, where you're not making, you know, growing it and making a difference. Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. We just, as a matter of fact, we were just talking before we started this is I just left a meeting where the family after, you know, 65 years just sold the business and, uh, you know, in the third generation and the level of emotions are, it's a rainbow. It's a plethora of different people feeling different things. There's relief for some because, you know, there was somebody in the second generation in his 80s that still felt that he had to run everything. Um, they, you know, they had not done the job to really put the power behind, you know, the, the G3 members. There's G3 members that are sitting there saying, I don't own as much of the business as I thought I did, or that I really, that I, did, that I understood that I did. And I'm not quite sure in my fifties if I'm as marketable as I might've been um, in the rest yeah. of the world as I was at the family business. So it's a, it's a very emotional piece. And then the other part, like you said, is, you know, if I haven't done my personal wealth planning, my personal financial planning, I don't know if I can live off of less than what I was, you know, bringing in. And oftentimes we've told people, you can't afford to sell the business at this point. Um, you better, you better do, think about doing something differently. That's 
right up the right up the alley of the the things that we talk about. I want, I want to hear more about you know um, some of those pieces that you know that you just talked about. But I also want to one of the things that we talked about earlier was the family wealth evaporation trap that you talked about back in London that I think it's still, you know, valuable and means, you know, a lot today. 